Hello Pythonistas on YouTube, welcome back to another series that we are going to start up today. It's a new data mining series, so data mining on Facebook. So uh, Facebook was launched in 2004 and initially limited to Harvard students. Today Facebook is a multi-billion dollar company with nearly 1.5 billion monthly active users. It is pop its popularity makes it an extremely interesting playground for data mining. So in this series, we will try to uh, go through the following uh, topics, creating an app to interact with the Facebook platform, interacting with the Facebook graph API, mining posts, posts from the authenticated user, and mining Facebook pages, visualization post, post and measuring engagement. And we'll even try to build a word cloud from a set of posts. So we are going to talk about the Facebook Graph API. The Facebook Graph API is the core of the Facebook platform, and it's one of the main components that enable the integration of third parties with Facebook. As the name suggests, it's uh, it offers a consistent graph-like view of data representing objects and the connections between them. The different platform components allow developers to access Facebook data and integrate Facebook functionalities into third-party applications. So in order to uh, work with the, the Facebook Graph API, you need to register your app. You can go to developers.facebook.com. should take you here. And I have some apps already uh, created here. Just click and add a new app under here. And once you have the name selected, you should get to your page here. So this panel provides crucial information such as app ID, app secret that will be necessary to access the API. To and in order to see the app secret, you need to provide your Facebook password to confirm your identity. And needless to say, these details are not to be shared with anyone for obvious security reasons. So in order to access access users' profile information as well as the information about their interaction with uh, interactions with other objects, for example, pages, places, and so on, your app must obtain an access token with the appropriate permissions. A token is unique to the user app combination and handles the permissions that the user has granted to the application. Generating an access a token requires user interaction, which means that the users have to confirm from Facebook, usually via a dialogue window, that they are granting the required permissions to the application. So for testing purposes, another way to obtain an access token is to use the Graph API Explorer, which is found here. Excuse me. Uh, so in order to get an access token, you select your app here and you get the token, get user as access token. And for our purposes, what we are going to use uh, are these um, permissions, user friends, user likes, uh, user relationships, uh, user tag places, and uh, user location is needed and user hometown and user status. So these are the ones that we need um, currently. So click the get access token and approve for user information. Okay. So now you should have your token user access token available from your Facebook Graph uh, API Explorer Tools page. So copy that somewhere. And once the app details are defined, we can programmatically access the Facebook Graph API via Python. Facebook doesn't provide an official client for Python, but we have, um, for our examples, we are going to use the Facebook SDK, also based on the requests library. 
which provides an easy to use interface to get data from and to web service. So install the Facebook uh, SDK with pip install. And once you have installed the when you install the Facebook SDK, now you set need to set the variables like we did in the Twitter application in your environment. This is one way of setting your token. So in Windows environment, you use set and Facebook tank token in your uh, command line prompt. And in uh, Mac um, OS users, you use export instead of set same way and your token after the equal sign, no space in between and no quotation marks. So now let's try to communicate with uh, with the Facebook graph API. So this for, uh, script connects the graph API and queries for the profile of the authenticated user. So pause it and copy the code. And to run it, we get the the output is a dump of a JSON object returned by the API. So the get object function, this one, takes the ID or name of a particular object in the Facebook graph and as the first argument and returns the desired information about it. In our example, the me ID is just an alias of the authenticated user. Without specifying the second argument and fields, the API would simply return the ID and name of the object. In this case, we explicitly ask for the name and location. As we saw here, we got it back. And we ask for the name and location to be included in the output. As you can see, location is not just a string, but a complex object with its own fields. As nothing else was specified, the fields included the location or simply ID and name. So the interface to get the data from the graph API class is quite straightforward. The class also provides facilities to publish and update data on Facebook, allowing the application to interact with the Facebook platform, for example, by posting some content on the authenticated user's wall. So this example script has used the get object method to download the profile of the current user. In this case, an optional keyword argument fields has been given to specify the attributes that we want to retrieve from the API. You can find a complete list of attributes uh, on the Facebook development developers page for the graph API. And following the API specification, we can we can see how we could personalize the field strings in order to get more information about the given string profiles. I mean, particularly, we can also perform necessary requests and include details of the objects connected to the given profile. So in our example, we retrieve the location, which is an object type of page. As each page has some attributes attached to it, we can also include them in our request. For example, changing the get object to include some more uh, information that we want. Uh, excuse me. And application. Save. Let's try this now. So what this does is that the first level and the second level syntax allow, allows us to query nested objects. In this particular example, the naming might be confusing as location. Is the name of both the first and second level attributes that we are retrieving. The solution to make sense of this little puzzle is to understand the data types. The first level location is an attribute of the user profile and its data type is Facebook page with its own ID, name, and other attributes. The second level location is instead an attribute of the aforementioned Facebook page, and it is uh, and it is a descriptor of an actual location made up with attributes such as latitude and longitude, among others. So you should get, uh, if you try the, the, the on, on your profile, you should get similar to this. 
So let's try to get uh, friends information about profile. Uh, just a note with the newer version of the Facebook Graph API, some data mining opportunities have opportunities have been limited, particularly mining the social graph that is friendship relationships is possible only if all the involved profiles are users of our app. So the following script that we see on the screen here, pause it uh, if you want to follow along, copy the code. Um, this script tries to obtain the list of friends of the authenticated user. So let's try to run it. And it gets the total count of my profile. So even though this call to the API requires the user underscore friends permission to be granted to our app, the script anyway, uh, the script is uh, anyway unable to retrieve, retrieve much data about friends as the authenticated user. That is me is currently the only user of the app. So the only information that we can retrieve is the total account of friends for the given user while the friends data is represented by the empty list if some of if some friends decide to use our app we will be able to retrieve their profiles through this call so that's it for this uh, video guys hope you have enjoyed the video so far and uh, there are lots of other videos that you can check out yeah we, we have python crash course how to work with the uh, scripting in Python, web, uh, working with web on Python, and tons of other videos. So check us all those other playlists as well. And if you like the video, please give me a thumbs up, hit the like button, subscribe button, share uh, this video if you find it interesting that others can have use for it. And hope to see you in the next video, which is about mining your posts. So see you guys in the next video. Bye.